Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Good morning. My name is Ray Tsuchiyama. I'm your host today on Think Tech Tech Talks. And we're going to have an exciting, very interesting show uh, with a person involved not only with China, tourism, Maui, uh, New York, uh, and the mainland, and, and global. And we're going to take a kind of a uh, show where we delve into issues that many people in Waikiki and the Hawaii business community are thinking about. And, and, and hard to wrap their kind of minds around. Uh, what is the future of tourism, uh, Asian tourism, Chinese tourism, online uh, and technology, the impacts. And we have today Yvonne Gu, who is at the Kanapali Beach Hotel as an online marketing manager. And she's, uh, she's had a very interesting series of experiences that projected her onto Maui and to the tourism industry. Welcome to the show, Yvonne. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. Terrific. And, and for our viewers, um, tell me about your background. Where were you born and raised in China? Where, where is that? So I was born and raised in Suzhou. That's a very small city next to Shanghai. So we basically are called as a garden for Shanghai people. Oh. So we speak Suzhou dialect and Mandarin. And of course, sometimes we speak Shanghai dialect as well. Okay. So you can also go to Shanghai and speak to the people there in the Shanghai dialect. A well, little. that's... That's right. Well, yeah. At least I'm very good at dialect. Oh, good, good. So I went to college and I have no problem. People yeah. thought I am Shanghainese. <laughs> because I know that uh, within Shanghai, uh, all, if they are Shanghaiese, that they speak only in the Shanghai dialect among themselves. Am I correct? Almost. <laughs> Almost, I have to say. Uh, so it's a very uh, uh, inclusive city there. But uh, so um, uh, tell me about Suzhou. Uh, when you say a garden city, isn't it a beautiful historical city in some ways? So Suzhou has 2,500 year history, wow. much longer than Shanghai. Um, it's a garden city of the world. Oh, I mean, it was UNESCO, I think, National Heritage Sites. Has tons of native, uh, like, Natural garden, not natural gardens, but gardens. Canals, a little bit. No, oh, no canals. Okay, but the gardens are what makes. Gardens uh, were built by those older administrators. Okay. They retire, and then they wanted to live in somewhere tranquil and peace. Okay, that's why they build those gardens and just. But the, but the city has been heavily influenced by the big city of Shanghai. I mean, I mean, uh, by the culture and the well, very vibrancy. originally, Shanghai was part of Suzhou. Oh, it was just a suburb well, area of yeah. Suzhou. But then, because it's a coastal area, right? It's a port city, right, and it's right. a port city, so it becomes more and more um, like the vessel, uh, like well, the boats come in and go, right. and then all the goods will transition right. there. So. And, and historically, of course, uh, during the late 19th century and early 20th, uh, it, it was uh, Shanghai was a place for many uh, foreigner, foreign uh, legations right. and, and the Bund that developed. And many people lived there from France, Germany, uh, United States, and Great Britain, uh, and so forth. So it was a, a business economic center mm -hmm. even before the war. Yeah. Uh, now, uh, and then you went uh, to uh, the Shanghai Normal University. Uh, tell me about the Shanghai Normal University. What kind of history it has? I don't really know about <laughs> well, its history. Well, is it, is it, uh, is as it, it a, called Normal University, yeah. so yes. very originally it was only educating for like teaching major, oh, okay. right, education right, right. major. Right, right, right. So whoever comes graduated from that university is right. mainly going to be a school right. teacher, professor, etc. Yeah, that's equivalent to uh, a teacher's college in uh, uh, many places in, in the U.S. But it, it changed over time to have many, many different majors, correct? Uh, correct? And, and uh, we were talking before the show on your journey uh, to enter this world of tourism and hospitality. And at the, in the beginning, you really weren't, uh, um, you know, really that interested. And how did you kind of uh, transform into uh, learning a lot more and making it a career in tourism and hospitality? I didn't really sign up for a tourism and management major. It was more like being arranged because I wanted to get into that university. My original plan was I want to go Chinese literature and become a Chinese teacher or something, like scholar. 
specific on Chinese. Oh. Um, but then I went in the tour of the management major um, and kind of liking it like throughout the four year study. And I got a chance to be the first, very first exchange students from um, Shanghai Normal University to UHMC. And then at that time, and we went to Maui in 2011. It, uh, right. And then we get to we get the chance to study in UHMC at the same time, working at one of the hotel on Maui. And then throughout that journey, um, that really develops my love for hospitality industry. And, and uh, was that the first time you had traveled outside of China when you went to Maui, or had you traveled uh, uh, places before? No, that's my first time coming to the U.S. Okay, uh, or anywhere outside of China. Yes, I correct. Okay. I think so. And, and, uh, and then you came to Maui, uh, which has its own beautiful, um, you know, uh, spot in the world, uh, and has been named the most beautiful spot by Condé Nast for many years. And uh, and and I was part of uh, UH Maui College at that time. And uh, Professor uh, Liu uh, uh, Liu Li Ping uh, was a expert or is an expert in, in, in uh, tourism and in global tourism and she was a pioneer in trying to get um, you know students interns from China uh, mm -hmm. for, and there was a, a group within center within the Shanghai Normal University called the Institute of Tourism yes am I correct uh, what is that uh, Institute about they specific study tour then and um, I think they have different concentrations let's say hotels travel agents or tool operators mm. etc so you can choose your concentration within that institution but I think they don't provide a bachelor degree they're like an associate degree okay. now uh, in China itself uh, the word tourism is not a new no. term um, because for many years, of course, China had to really develop itself industrially, uh, really uh, create an um, uh, economic technological base. And uh, that, uh, of course, uh, really uh, uh, came about during the 90s into the 2000s. And, uh, as I recall, uh, Deng Xiaoping and a lot of reformers mm -hmm. in, in the late 80s really uh, pushed for uh, greater uh, liberalization of economy. So uh, this is so tourism is kind of a recent phenomenon, and tourism itself as a recent research topic and teaching topic. Uh, tell me about it. When did it all start to happen? Tourism to study it or uh, become aware of it? I don't really know about the um, history, but I think um, Dr. Li Ping Liu. She right. was originally working in China, and then she was one of the like CEO of one of the tool right. company, and then back then. 1980s, 70s, right. 80s. Right. That was when the tourism booming right. and everybody oh. wanting to dive into that industry because they found out, oh, actually we have an extra money to do some tourism, right. to do some um, recreation, not saying vacation, but because vacation is not really a term in China, right. Right. we go tourist attractions. We go visit terracotta warriors, right. and then we right. go visit this mountain. Something like that. It's so, a cultural, historical uh, travel. And then uh, that time, really I tourism. think it's everything getting systematic. Oh. Like who organized right. what, and then what kind of regulations needed. Right. And after, after, so you uh, spent some time uh, uh, working internally at the McKenna uh, Resort on Maui. What, uh, w w and, and it must have been a revelation to you. What, what, what are the things that you learned uh, during the experience that really um, you carried forth? Because before that, I never actually interned at a hotel or never actually working in a hotel. I did working for one of the, um, I think, hotel groups as like HR intern. But you don't really dive into that environment. It's all more office administrative stuff. And then at the McKenna uh, Beach and Golfers were right. at that time. And it was really um, mind blowing when seeing the Aloha spirit meeting hospitality spirit. Mm -hmm. Because already, when you're walking on the street, people are gonna say aloha or smiling at right. you. That's not never happened in big city. Oh, okay. Shanghai or New York, right. nobody's gonna smile at you. <laughs> that would be a little bit weird. <laughs> um, so that that is um, definitely mind blowing experience. And then you can see really those stuffs are generating wanting to deliver a service, okay. want to smile to their guests, want to deliver a good vacation experience. And at that time, uh, what was the uh, tourist uh, composition was it mostly from the uh, U.S. mainland West Coast, or Japan, uh, global. What what kind of people uh, tourists did you deal with at that time? McKenna is a little bit different because it was used to be my Prince Hotel, right. which was Japanese owned, 
originally right. before Landmark take over. Right. So it was still have a big base of Japanese guests. Oh, right. And of course, there are more like mainland Americans right. Right. coming over. But that time, I um, wasn't really studying in their right. um, customer segments. So. Okay. And uh, after uh, Makena, where did you did you go back to China? Yes, after I go Maui? back to China. And, and what did you do? I um, got a position at Grand Hyatt Shanghai yeah. because that's a landmark hotel in Shanghai. And tell me about that. Uh, I've stayed there, and yeah, I think it's like uh, 55 stories. Am I, is it more? It's, it's, well, uh, the Jingmao Tower is yeah. 88. Oh, 88, right. <laughs> because it's 88 Central right, 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 Avenue, right, right. so it has 88 floor, and wow. 8 is such a fortunate number right, right. in China according to feng shui. Right, right. So it has 88th floor, but not all the floors are at the hotel. Right, so right. It's part office, part from, apartment, uh, many, yeah. many different types of... Uh, so the ground floor, we have different entrance. So oh, there is right, one right. ground floor is right. uh, lo not lobby, like, how to say, port ish Right, right, So right. You, you start in there, and then you take the elevator to 54th right. floor. 54th floor is our main lobby. And then the hotel ranging from 54th floor to 87. Wow. I remember staying there, as I said, uh, in my bathtub, look, uh, looking at the clouds pass by uh, uh, in the window. Uh, fantastic experience. And what did you do there, the Jin Mao? I was originally as a, a PR coordinator. Oh. So I'm doing press release, meeting media relationships, uh, all those like organizing events, that kind of things. And then after a few times, and then I transitioned to like oh more marketing, and then doing all the marketing strategies, and then transfer to sales department. So when we were in PR department, we are on fifty third floor mm. because we are more interacting with the chefs, with right. um, all the events happening at the lobby or above, and then going to sales mar uh, sales department that's on the second floor. Mm. That's more closer to the meeting rooms and convention centers. And then you don't really need to communicate with other. <laughs> so you did various things, uh, yes. and you see you so how a hotel organized yeah. and marketing and so forth. And, and uh, from there, where did you go? From the, so uh, the I Jingma. worked uh, more than three years yeah. at Grand Hai Shanghai, and then during the working time, I, I feel like there are something I'm lacking. Right. I don't have a bigger picture view. I don't know how to strategic thinking. I'm mm. only concentrating on my own numbers right. and how I can improve my own numbers. But that's not, well, I want to achieve more on uh, the hospitality industry. So I need to learn more at that time. So I um, studied whatever I need to study and then apply for graduate school in America. And as we all know, the best graduate school or best hotel school is Cornell. So that's why I applied there and I fortunately get accepted. So you spent some uh, uh, really great um, uh, um, time at Ithaca. This is where it is, right? Ithaca, New York. Ithaca. Yeah, very cold Ithaca <laughs> during the winter, and I've been there. Uh, and and it's famous also for uh, the Statler Hotel. There's a, there's a, um, a teaching hotel right on campus, right as you said, right next to the uh, buildings for the uh, hospitality programs. Uh, out of that experience, and and it's a global uh, hospitality program. Uh, any takeaways? What, what were the key points that you could say you really uh, learned there? So our program called MMH, Master of Management in Hospitality. So that is for educating, um, how to say, the leaders in right. hospitality industry, although that's also a model for undergraduate students right, at the same right. time. Uh, our program is very diverse. Our age range from 21-ish to 50-something. So it's very wow. diverse. Wow. And then we all have one year program, right, which is right. May to May, very right. intense class. So you don't really get to right. do a lot other than um, study. So major takeaway is actually it gives me a, a bigger picture mm. view as what I wanted to know, um, to do a strategic planning, to look into the organizational behavior. Well, we're going to uh, take uh, a takeaway right now and come back to this great topic uh, with a few ads from, uh, from Think Tank Kauai. Aloha, I'm Kili'i Akina, and I'm here every other week on Mondays at 2 o'clock p.m. on Think Tank Kauai's Hawaii Together. In Hawaii Together, we talk with some of the most fascinating people in the islands about working together working together for a better economy, government, and society. So I invite you into our conversation every other Monday at 2 p.m. on Think Tech Hawaii Broadcast Network. Join us for Hawaii Together. I'm Kili'i Akina. Aloha. 
Good afternoon. My name is Howard Wig. I am the proud host of Code Green, a program on Think Tech Hawaii. We show at 3 o'clock in the afternoon every other Monday. My guests are specialists, both from here and the mainland, on energy efficiency, which means you do more for less electricity and you're generally safer and more comfortable while you're keeping dollars in your pocket. Hi, this is Reisu Shiyama on uh, Tech Talks today with an exciting guest, Ivan Gu. And we've been talking about what kind of strategic overview that Ivan learned at Cornell's uh, graduate school in, in hospitality. Uh, why don't you just go back to that and you say, what, uh, can you give me an example of, of a, a strategic uh, idea that you learned that you could apply or really think about uh, right now from your Cornell experience? So, like we dive more into revenue management, which I'm also very interested in. I think all the hotels should be applying revenue management, uh, not necessarily to be a system, but it's a thinking strategy mm. by the management team. So, it's letting you to foresee the future, not only concentrating on next three months, next six months. Right. You have to see what is the economy trend it's looking like. Mm. You have to getting into the bigger environment in order to increase your own number. It's you are not isolated. So every department and also organizational behavior, you, every department should not be siloed, mm -hmm. and then that would be a problem occurred. So these are the things I didn't really think about before because I'm too concentrating on whatever I have to do at that time. So that was like the Cornell would tell me, and we have really good uh, revenue management professor. And we have Cheryl Kimes, Dr. Cheryl Kimes, and she is like the funder for re uh, revenue management. Mm -hmm. And she's the first person bringing up the idea of re restaurant re revenue oh, management. Right, right. So we are counting the revenue per avail available seating hours. Oh, yeah. So, you know, we have rev pot at hotels, so she has a rev posh for the restaurants. <laughs> So it's a micro view, but yet you say you have to take a macro view. You have Correct. to be both at the same time. So undergraduates, we learn macro management and micro man mm. uh, economy. Right, we right. learn those economies. Right. But at that time, it's so vague, mm. like what it is. We only know how to do the calculations. We don't really know how that impacts our daily lives. So that's not in a practical level. But then um, when you learn revenue management or think about like a bigger picture, you take it to a practical level. Now, it, it, there's one uh, word in your title that I'm uh, curious about, online. Mm -hmm. okay, you know, we talk about online all the time, that the future is online. Uh, we talk about Airbnbs and Amazons and, and so forth. What does online mean to you? What is it to, to uh, the hotel industry? Um, I would say I'm millennial. So I grew up in a digital age. I've been using computers since elementary school, maybe before that, because we, at home, we have computer, like, a like, very long time ago. So I grew up with the interaction with computer, and I know at that time we can already watch TV on computer instead of you have to buy a DVD disc. Um, so online is a very important part of my life, and I think no matter, although hospitality industry is more like people, person-person interaction right. world, it somehow need the technology to um, bridge the gap or even make person-to-person -person interaction more personalized, interactive. Um, that's my thought of view. And um, with technology evolving, um, I don't see any robot we will be replacing unless that's a really business hotel and the people just want to come and go without interacting there are with any people. Uh, robots uh, functions uh, as check-ins in Japan, in but, Tokyo. <laughs> yeah, and Hilton Hotel, they do have um, room service or some others oh, yeah. by a robot right, right, delivered right. to your room yeah. um, or like deliver extra yeah. towers to your room. But um, at least in Hawaii, that's what people are looking for. They're looking for interaction with local. Right. right. Um, HCA campaign has um, the Let Hawaii Happen, and mm. they have some campaigns or um, videos about uh, live like a local or a day with a local. Right, so it's right. all human human interaction. Right. Uh, and then that's all like I passing on my experience or passing on what I love or mm. something like that to the guests. So. Well, well going, uh, we're talking about guests, and uh, at your hotel, and I know Mike White, uh, the GM from ages ago in the 80s, and he's very famous for introducing, as we were talking about, the host culture uh, among the staff. 
that when you really love your job and you also uh, love your culture and you understand it, you really include others uh, in a true, very true hospitality um, uh, movement or you know within within the hotel. Uh, uh, at, at the Colorado Poly Beach Hotel has that. Uh, from the from the 80s to now, uh, has it changed in any way in in, in uh, the, uh, that training, or is it uh, basically the same? So I joined the hotel almost two years ago. So I'm not I'm not a long term employee over there for sure. But um, it really influenced you. Mm. You're starting really concentrating on the use of Okina and Kohoko right oh, now. Oh. You are concentrating on how to make it correct. Right. And then you will be noticing other people are not using right. correct <laughs> right. words. Like the, today, <laughs> like the word kind of poly, but go ahead, yeah. Uh, so we have a Pokela uh, program. Pokela means excellence. Oh. That's also new, I learned right, right, once, right. since I joined the hotel. It was originally funded in uh, 1986. Right, right. So 30 years already, right, right. more than 30 years already. Uh, we had a tree. They planted a kukui tree at the funding of the Pookela at the property, and now the tree is like already a symbol for us wow. because we give kukui nanle to guests upon wow. checkout. So we will tell every guest the story about kukui tree, kukui nuts, and how they enlighten your life. Mm. Um, so all the Pookela programs, which um, have a whole training system for the um, employees. Mm. So upon the joining the hotel, normal hotel will have orientation. We have orientation too, but our orientation is a little bit different. Normal hotels will teach them like hotel mission and vision and what your department is right, doing, right. other department is doing, your interaction. But ours are mission and vision, how we want to serve our guests and how we want to um, serve our employees hmm. to make them a right. happy working place. Right. And at the same time, they are a, a series of Hawaiian culture training. Right to the entire employees, so they have to finish it in order to get a certificate. Right. Um, so including Olelo Hawaii, right, right, the language, um, yeah, Mele, language, right, right. which is a songs, song, Hawaiian songs. songs. Right. Well, also KBH is very famous for their um, hotel songs. Right. We oh. are the most seen hotel. Interesting. So every I Friday we have um, Friday Aloha singing oh. at the lobby. So we will sing to the guests and dance hula to them. Now, uh, have you taken surveys or audited to the guests that they enjoy this and is a reason for their return to the Kalapani Beach Hotel. They're actually really building the bond with their employees at uh, Haleho Okipa, which are the major conductor for the ceremony. Um, we read tons of surveys about how people love the interaction with auntie and uncle, and how they feel this is very touchy-feely. Right. Now, is it a model for other hotels in, in the world? We don't know if any <laughs> other hotels uh, yeah. apply that because if that's a, a major hotel groups, they have right. their own orientation schedule. Right, right. They have very um, strict brand image or brand right. guideline to follow. So, but I'm there must like be uh, host culture kind of themes that hotels in other countries or regions correct, or cities correct. could develop. That uh, when you go there, you really learn and share that culture of that area. So it's not like uh, you just go in and go out, that you bring back something to your home, that you learn something about that culture. Yeah. Um, there is even, I think, one of the news channels was developing a, um, a show about how you can learn local things while you stay at that country. Oh, well, yeah. That's, so there was like yeah. a, a Mex authentic Mexican cooking demonstration in a, Mex in a hotel in Mexico. And then they featured our um, Hawaiian cultural programs. Mm. Well, you're here uh, uh, in Honolulu for the Pata Conference, and uh, people are talking about the future of tourism in Hawaii. My specific question to you, because of your unique experience as a background, what is the future of Chinese tourism to Hawaii? Uh, what is it today, and what could uh, be in the future? Uh, what people in Waikiki and other Maui or uh, Hawaii are like thinking about? And what are your insights? I think it will still largely rely on Hawaii tourism in China, mm. how they portray the image and how they tell the story. Because there are still a lot of people in China don't know Hawaii is eight islands. Okay, right, right. They thought that's well, just Well, there's maybe the mainland also. Right. <laughs> or the world. Like, yeah. I, can, I can drive to different islands. Yeah, now, right, so right. education is still okay. a big that's part. That's number one. Yeah, number one. Education. And second, storytelling. Mm -hmm. How we differentiate Hawaii with Fiji. Right. Bali, right. uh, Maldives, yeah. um, 
any other like island, island or, in Philippines island destinations. and yeah. Thailand. Right. How you convince yeah. people to come here? Right. Because it's more expensive, definitely more expensive, mm. and needs visa. Right. Um, Thailand is visa free for PRC citizens. Yes. Yeah. So, and I can see the trend of my um, WeChat. Yeah, uh, right. My friends are yeah. going here and there. Right. They this year I see people go Europe a lot, really? and then yeah, yeah. last year I see people go Japan a lot. Right, right. So it's so there are trends very much the influenced Chinese by right. trend. Right. Like what other people are going, right, right. or is that country has a favorable policy mm. towards Chinese guests? Of course, yeah. And how easy is the visa? Right. So visas are very important, and, and ease, and of course travel, and, and of course the story or trend of what's happening. But when they get to a hotel, are there specific things that they would like or expect that would make their stay uh, more comfortable? As I see a lot of trends, is like right now, all my friends coming to Hawaii, they are not necessarily looking for a Chinese speaker. Okay. They're wanting to be more involved with local. Oh, they want wow. to know what that's locals a, that's do. That's a great uh, a revelation to me. I thought they wanted to be in a Chinese environment still. But the, uh, they want Chinese food, that's for okay. sure. Okay. Uh, because they usually bring their parents. It's oh, majorly a multi generation right. Right. travel. Or like friends with friends, family with friends, friends, family. Right. So it's Auntie, a, aunt, a maybe bigger group. Right, right. Um, so there are definitely older generations that mm. doesn't speak English, but right. the younger generation all right, speak do. pretty good right. English. Right. So they wanted to know where to go, where mm. to eat, right. um, where which so is the best. So better guides, eat. better guides that, that they expect. Uh, guide uh, online. Uh, yeah, or, if there or, is a guide in yeah. Chinese, that would be better right. because I don't know if there's Chinese guide. For Not Maui. many. There yeah, are yeah, for yeah. like uh, Pearl Harbor for right, sure, right, right. Missouri. Like, that's right. for sure. They have Chinese right. guides, um, but they definitely looking for Chinese restaurant because older generation oh, they only wanting to yeah, dine right, in Chinese right. restaurant. I encounter a lot of people yeah. like all younger people with yeah. their uh, parents. Right. So they were, we were talking and they're like, oh, we we actually living in LA or we living somewhere right. in mainland U.S. and then we are taking the parents here. Well, unfortunately, I would like to ask. 100 more questions, but we're out of time. <laughs> and 30 minutes passed very quickly, but I would like to thank you for this introduction. I hope you can come back again, because I think the viewers really love this discussion, because it gives them insights in a world that is quite still mysterious, but you combine online tech with China and with, uh, with uh, Olalo Hawaii and, and, and the host culture in a beautiful way. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me here. And thank you again, viewers of, of uh, ThinkTech Hawaii. Ray to GM. Thank you.